Good morning. morning. Welcome to Calvary. We're glad that you're here. Before we begin our worship service, I want to take a little bit of an extended time uh, to talk to you uh, about money and giving uh, here at Calvary. And I'd like you to pay close attention because I sort of have two distinct things to say for two distinct groups. And so uh, not everything I'm going to say goes with everybody. So listen carefully uh, for which group you fall into. Uh, The first thing I want to spend just a few minutes talking about is Grace Beyond. Uh, For those of you who don't know, Grace Beyond is the name of the building project that the Lord has taken us on over the past four or five years. And uh, it's been about really very little to do with the building and everything to do with about how God is building us as a church and how he's transforming us. And one of the most remarkable things that God has done with regards to Grace Beyond is he's taken us on a journey of faith in regards uh, to the money. And so the cost of the project was uh, about $29 million. And uh, as we started on that journey, it was like, where in the world, Lord, is that money going to come from? And God's been incredibly faithful, and we are four and a half years into the giving portion of it. And as of the end of September, the current balance that we owe on that short-term construction loan is $180,000. That's crazy, yes. You can keep celebrating in your hearts because I just checked in on Thursday to say, okay, well, just for the, like, the very latest, uh, it's now 1.36. Uh, so that's in two weeks' time. <clears throat> now, the other piece that we can celebrate is that the leadership of the church, uh, we have some money left over from year-end surplus. So our fiscal year ended Uh, God was very gracious to us, and we have some surplus. We didn't spend as much money as we were uh, expecting to spend. And so what the leadership of the church decided was to set aside whatever amount is necessary, uh, because we do have more than 136,000, to pay off the rest of it. And we'll be able to do that. The day we picked was December 18th. And for those of you who've been around Calvary and this project, December 18th is the day we move back into this building. It comes out of the book of Haggai chapter two, and it was just our way sort of as the leadership of the church to acknowledge this was God from beginning to end, and he made so many promises. And the crazy thing is, uh, is that I think in January we were sort of due to have this turn into a long-term, or that's when it would have turned into a long-term mortgage or or note, and the fact that we're gonna get this all paid off um, before that ever happens is really miraculous. Now you may say, well, why not just pay it off now? Well, a couple of reasons. One is, is December 18th does have some really uh, kind of a powerful feel to it, and so we're waiting for that. But the other reason was, as we spent time praying about this, the Lord said, there's a few more people uh, that I want to have come with us. Now, here's where I want to kind of differentiate between two groups. If you've given to Grace Beyond, uh, then please, you can listen, but the part of this, this next part is not for you, Okay. This is for those who may be new to Calvary and not new in the last week or two or month or something like that. But if the Lord has called you to make Calvary Church your home, as we prayed about it, this is an opportunity for you to join with us before this project is over. I've already laid my cards on the table. We have enough money for this, so this is not a plea for money. What this is, as we prayed about it, is we've used the metaphor over and over again of God taking Israel through the Jordan River into the promised land. And I'm here to testify the river parted. Eleven and seven-eighths of the tribes are through the water. We're in the land, but the river hasn't closed yet. And so if in the past year or two when you got here, you're like, well, I kind of heard about this thing, but I wasn't really a part of it. There's still a chance, and again, we're not here begging you for the money, but there is an opportunity for you to give to this so that you can be part of this with us. So it's an invitation. God has done amazing, incredible things, but we're inviting you. Look, the river's still open. You don't have to be the first one in the river. We've already had some people here who had the faith to step into the river back when there were zero dollars out of 29 million. The fact that we still need 136 thumb thousand The river has parted, it's going to close, the Lord has provided the money, but we're inviting you, come join us. 
This will be a significant event in Calvary Church's history, and when we look back and talk about major things God's done for us, Grace Beyond will always be part of that story. And so we're saying, you know what, if you just showed up uh, on the shores of the river and you're like, hey, look, where are all those people going? Come with us into the promised land. How do you do that? You just simply pray, and if God tells you to give anything, you just make a payment to uh, Grace Beyond. Whatever amount, and it's not because, again, we need the money, but if once you give, you're sort of joining us on this journey and we're inviting you, come into the promised land uh, with us. And so I just want to encourage you to think about that, pray through that. I do also want to say on December 15th, which is the Sunday, we're going to be having a celebration service to just celebrate what God's done because he's done it from beginning to end and we're going to rejoice together at his faithfulness to us. On December 18th, the river closes. And so we're inviting you, if you've not been a part of this, uh, come and join us. It's an invitation. Now, for the other group, this is the group that has given something to Grace Beyond. Now we're talking to us now. Up until this point, uh, we've asked you to pray and give to Grace Beyond. And as you can tell, money's still coming in. And that's amazing. I don't know where it's coming from. The Lord is providing it. But what we're saying now is, is look, uh, the Lord's put us in the land. We've made it. This is what God wants us to do. And so we're asking you, I know this sounds weird, we're asking you to stop giving to Grace Beyond. If you're one of the ones who's come with us on this journey, we're in the land, and so we're holding your pledges fulfilled. I know one family here that said, you know what, the Lord laid on our hearts that we should keep giving, not until the pledge season was over, but until everything was paid for. And so if that's you, or you're, we're telling you, we feel like the Lord has provided the money for it. Uh, we feel like we're going into the land. Having said that, many of us, me included, have found, you know what? Giving to the Lord is, this is a really fantastic thing, and the Lord has blessed us in powerful ways. And Grace Beyond was not just about getting a building built, but about transforming us as a church. And so what I'd like to share with us who have given is what do we do going forward? And for that, I'd like to say, okay, we're going to shift us from giving to Grace Beyond but there still is a wonderful opportunity to be able to give above and beyond our tithes and offerings. So your tithes and offerings go to the general budget. But there are often times where the Lord gives you a raise or blesses you in some fantastic way or you go through this big experience or something and you're like, you know what, I just want to say thank you to God. What should we do going forward? Well, we have four things that are going to be part, they already are, but we want to align them for you. Part of Calvary Church this year and in all future years as far as the Lord will lead. Here are your four choices when the Lord lays on your heart, because after December 18th, you cannot give to Grace Beyond. Here are four things for you to prayerfully consider. None of these are new, but we just kind of organize them so that we can kind of keep track of them. Number one is benevolence. Benevolence assists people who are in financial need, and you can give to Benevolence Fund all year long, but we especially talk about benevolence during our communion services. So if you have gifts and offerings above and beyond what you're giving to the regular fund and you want to help those who are in financial need, benevolence. Number two is what we call the Jonathan Fund. This has existed at Calvary for a long time. We haven't talked about it a lot publicly. Jonathan is a character in the Bible who blessed David and helped him endure some really difficult suffering. We have a fund at the church that is designed to do that exact same thing. It's simply designed to bless people, especially those who are going through difficult seasons of suffering. You can give to that fund all year long, but we are tying that fund, at least for us talking about it, to Lent. Because we'll be thinking about Jesus' sufferings and during the season of Lent, giving to help other people endure suffering. The third option is what we call Celebrate Missionaries. Uh, this is a fund that you can give to all year long as well. Uh, and this goes to bless those who are actively engaged in the cross-cultural proclamation of the gospel. And if the Lord lays on your heart, you know what, I want to give something extra this month or extra this week, and you want to give it to bless those who are engaged in that, uh, you can do that all year long. But we'll be talking about that specifically in connection with Pentecost. And that is when the giving of the Spirit and the command from God to go into all the world and to preach the gospel... Uh, we're going to be thinking about celebrating missionaries in connection with Pentecost. And then the fourth option is the Jerusalem Project. And the Jerusalem Project already exists. And this is a way that we as a church 
advance Christ's kingdom by planting churches, strengthening existing churches, and training church leaders. And if that's something the Lord lays on your heart, you can give to that all year long, but we'll be talking about that specifically in connection with year-end, so tied to the Feast of Tabernacles and year-end giving. Again, nothing new. We do all four of these things. The new piece is we're tying them to specific events in the church calendar and saying, look, there's lots and lots of things you could give to, but at Calvary in the near future going forward, here are four things after Grace Beyond uh, that you can give your uh, additional gifts above your tithes and your offerings.